Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today I'm in the beautiful state of Hawaii. Hawaii is a set of islands in the Pacific Ocean that are around 2,000 miles from the U.S. mainland. It has eight main islands rich in culture and history. I was curious about EV ownership and their source of energy, so while on travel, I dove into a little research. This is just a surface level look at Hawaii's current EV infrastructure and energy sources. As an outsider, I don't have the experience of living every day here. So if you are a viewer from this state, let me know where your experiences and thoughts are around EVs. All right, let's dive in. I want to start by acknowledging all of the work being done in the state of Hawaii for the electrification of vehicles. Organizations such as Drive Electric Hawaii and the Hawaii Electric Vehicle Association do education, outreach, and advocacy for electric cars. Additionally, they have EV clubs to support the mission on different islands. I'll link the web pages for those in the description below. This state is quite far away from other land. While it's able to be served internet through submarine fiber, electricity can't travel this far underwater in a cost-effective way. The island's power grids are not connected to other islands, so Hawaii's energy generation is done on each island. Many remote areas are oil dependent, so the majority of the power in Hawaii is from petroleum and coal. The island of Oahu, for example, is an oil dependent island. Comparing Oahu to the U.S. nationally, you can see in this breakdown that Oahu's two biggest sources to generate electricity are 55.4% petroleum and 19% solar in 2020. Comparing it nationally, the U.S. biggest sources are natural gas at 40.3% and renewables at 19.8%. Looking statewide, there's a good mix of solar, hydro, wind, and even geothermal power sources on the islands. According to Hawaiian Electric, their grid mix is made up of about 35% renewable sources as of 2020. They even had a peak of 89.5% power generation of renewable energy at one point. This utility provides power for five of the eight major islands. Some of the islands are configured with large battery systems to store the renewable energy while it's overproducing and then provide it back to the grid when it's needed. Each island has several generating sites. You can look up each generation site online and these wind turbines behind me are capable of generating 51 megawatts of power. Maui has one of the largest wind farms in the state. This location in the West Maui Mountains has 34 wind turbines. That might sound small, but it represents 10 to 15% of energy generation for the island. Wind energy is Hawaii's second most used renewable energy resource. This wind farm is also backed up with 10 megawatts of battery power. This is a solar power plant on the island of Kauai. It has a 13 megawatt solar farm paired with 52 megawatt hours of Tesla power packs. The batteries can output up to 13 megawatts as well. The project uses Power Pack 2, with each individual power pack having a capacity of 200 kilowatt hours. These help keep power on while the sun isn't shining. A quick view of the state's energy profile. You can see that the Big Island has some hydroelectric power plants, petroleum power plants, and wind power plants, among other energy sources. Looking at Maui again, we can see some solar power plants on the map and wind power plants. Oahu has petroleum plants, biomass power plants, and some solar, of course. Again in Kauai, we see solar, petroleum power plants, and hydroelectric power. How many EVs are registered in the entire state? Over the years, the number of registered electric vehicles has increased. In 2020, there were a little over 13,000 registered EVs, and as of September 2021, there were around 16,000. Driving around, I was surprised to spot as many electric cars as I did. There was a lot of Nissan Leafs and, of course, several Teslas. Currently, Hawaii has only one Tesla service center, which is located in Honolulu. What's the electric car charging network like? Well, it turns out it's actually not half bad depending on the island, of course. Level 2 charging appears to be very prevalent on the main island, and you shouldn't have any issues getting a slow fill-up. Four of the islands even have fast charging. So far, the fast charging on the island is entirely CCS1 and Chatamo. On a recent webinar that was hosted by the Hawaii Electric Auto Association, it was said that Hawaii is among the highest EV adoption rates per capita in America. However, people have voiced concerns with the lack of chargers. Many live in places that do not have areas to plug in a vehicle or parking is on the street with no access to an outlet. According to the presentation, Hawaii has 361 EV public charging stations and Hawaii Electric forecasts 3,651 public charging stations by 2030. 
Currently, Hawaii Electric owns the majority of the fast charging stations compared to other private party stations throughout the state. If you're looking into getting a Tesla, you're not going to have a fast charging network to rely on unless you have a Chatamo or the upcoming CCS adapter. Tesla is looking to build out its supercharging network starting on Oahu, which is targeted for opening in the fourth quarter of 2021, followed by another charger opening on Kahului in 2022. Electricity on the Hawaiian Islands isn't the cheapest. When prices of oil goes up, so does the cost of electricity. Its pricing is comparable to a state like California. If you were to own an EV here, it's even more important to have a time of use plan. There are significant savings when charging during the midday hours on the time of use program. If you're able to charge your car during these hours, you'll see greatly reduced fuel costs in comparison to a gas car. Charging at home is of course the cheapest option as it is pretty much everywhere in the world. When going to a DC fast charger, they're also utilizing time of use charging with prices fluctuating from 40 cents and up to 65 cents per kilowatt hour. There's a lot of work and research being done in Hawaii in regards to shifting to electric cars and the use of renewable energy. Some of the challenges are increasing the charging infrastructure and analyzing the impact and outcome of reducing fossil fuel consumption. While there are challenges, there are also opportunities and successes. The state has a growing number of EVs, people are interested in learning more about electric cars, and the state is committed to invest in the expansion of the electric car infrastructure. Again, this was a brief look into Hawaii's EV infrastructure, so if you have any questions, I suggest reaching out to those local agencies and organizations I mentioned earlier in the video. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at kaizev.com. That's all for now, and happy charging.